Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. We've got so many talented people in our field as distributors, and there's some really gold nuggets that can help propel all of us forward. So we've got Mary Duffy. Mary, there's so much as an international life coach, as all of your years of really helping people see their direction in life and becoming successful. I mean, your skill set just goes on and on. Starting the conversation with strangers. In the context, I mean, we've talked, what we're talking about tonight is setting up expos, doing booths, really having these public displays. So it's not where there's been any relationship before. So I'm just going to open it up, Mary, and ask you, what is the secret? How do you get these conversations started? What, what is it that you know is, makes it successful and makes it fun? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for allowing me to come and share with you this evening. Uh, it is my privilege and I look very, very much forward to sharing the information. But the first, I feel like that is the key to everything is really to observe, mm. is really to watch your surroundings, to look at the people as they are approaching you, look at who they're with and see that energy because as you do that, it will allow you to become to get into rapport with the person. It will allow you to get into more action with the person. The more you look at them and as you invite them into your space. Uh, this past weekend, people would be coming by the booth and taking a look and I'd look at them and I'd pay attention to what they were doing. And sometimes all I would say is, come on into the house. <laughs> it's very simple, come on into the house as they were looking and then the, the next thing they would probably they were saying is that your picture is that really you and that opened up the conversation for me to know then where to go with it whether it was about the stem cells or whether it was about the emulin or about which direction to go with the product it opened up the conversation and then i would ask them questions that's very mm -hmm. important too mm -hmm. ask them the question of how are you today? Uh, what brings you in or something to get a feel for who they be and what's going on with that individual. Uh, sometimes you want to know if you'll ask them about their health and all of a sudden they're just telling you their life story. It's important that you listen. Then you listen a little bit more and then you listen a little bit more and gather as much information as you possibly can during that time frame. The more information you can gather, the more you can work with that. Right. So I have a question for you, Mary, because you're you're really speaking from this level of expertise where right. you really know it's about observing, listening. So what is it that you do before you're there in the public? that you're able to be what where you're open where you're clear to be observing listening and make the questions all about them because if we've got our own kind of dialogue going on if we're not you know things aren't right or we're insecure or da 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 you know this is something obviously you've been doing and are so good at that you don't even think about it. It's an unconscious competency. So I know I'm asking you something 
that you haven't really, you know, put it out in one, two, three steps. But I'm curious, do you do anything internally so that you're ready to be clear and ask them questions and invite them in and just be at that place that is a connecting vibration. I mean, you're talking about energy. Let's talk about energy, right? I get into the moment. I leave whatever I have going on at home at home. I leave it. Uh, if I had a problem on the freeway going to the event, I leave it on the freeway. It's about really becoming very present, very aware of where you're at at that point in time. It's being there. Mm. It's not being somewhere else. It's being grounded in that moment to become fully aware of who you are, where you are, and your full surroundings. It's like I go into my intuitive side. Some people call it their creative side. You call it whatever. You go into that space of just being. Mm -hmm. And when you go into that space of just being, that's when you can connect to all of your surroundings. So it's about opening up to your surroundings. It's about being fully present in that moment. Right. So this presence, then, what I'm hearing, you go into then questions about them. Right. You give examples of questions that you would suggest. Oh, if they have children, ask them about their children. Mm -hmm. If they have health issues, ask them to expand about them on their health issues. Ask them if they're open to alternative ways of healing. Some people aren't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people are just going to close you down the minute you mention alternative. And if they do, you kind of understand that. You wish them well and you let them go. You don't keep hounding it. You just kind of move through it and past it. Because if you don't do that, then what happens is, is you just keep beating it and beating it and beating it and beating it. You can't get it. And then you ask them what they're involved in. You ask them what their likes are. You ask them what they're into. And if they're into wellness or if they're into anything of that nature, as it relates to Emulon, if it was another thing, I mean, it's just really just getting to know so, someone. So is that how you ask the question? Like, what are you into? Or do you say something like, do you care about, I mean, is your health a priority or... I, I guess what I'm now kind of digging a little bit for are the actual verbiage of the questions that you might ask somebody. Well, one of the things I ask are if it is pertaining to like, um, let's just say we're wanting to recruit someone. I would ask them, are they interested in making more money? Are they interested in having a part-time job? Or maybe I would ask them, um, are they a stay-at-home mom? It just depends on who, what the situation is at that current point in time. Because it it really is to do with whom you're talking to. You feel into what they're wanting to discuss with you. If it's about recruiting, you ask them, are they interested in an alternative business? I mean, a stay-at-home or a work-from-home business. Sometimes they'll say yes. Sometimes they'll say no. They say yes, you expand and find out if they would be interested in doing something of this type or somebody will come up to me and say, oh, I'm looking to open my own business. I'd be like, well, what type of business you're looking to have? And they would be like, oh, I'm going to open up a gym. And I'd be like, oh, really? And I would ask them and I would get them going on that. And I would be like, well, have you ever considered this? Or have you ever thought about this? And so when, does that se when does that segue happen? So you're asking questions about their interest in the business, how they, what they're wanting to do, and then how does it segue back to Igalen the products? It's it all for me. It's almost a natural process. Right, and I, I understand that's why yeah. I'm asking you because <laughs> you are the expert with this yeah. natural process. It's more of a natural process. It's just as the conversation flows you can kind of wander it back around 
And as you get into rapport with the person, there's a fabulous book out there called Instant Rapport by Michael Brooks. Okay. That I would recommend rapport. everyone to read that book. It talks about how to mirror the person. Maybe I'm mirroring that person. Mm -hmm. For me, I may be looking at their eyes and seeing if they're visual and if they are, I'm gonna talk to them in pictures. If they're kinesthetic, I'm gonna talk to them from their feeling center. If yes. they're digital, I'm gonna talk with them with words. So it will vary as to how I segregate it back. I may take them back into a picture. Well, have you ever um, saw yourself as being thinner? Or have you ever saw yourself as being happier? Well, that would be a, that's quite a provocative question for- Well, of course, because if they're talking to you about weight loss, you gotta see if they can actually go there. Right. You have to see if they can actually visualize themselves being there. They may talk about it all day long, but if they can't see it, be it, or feel it, they can't have it. Mm. You've got to go into being that energy. You've got to go wow. into seeing that energy and just imagining yourself there. It's like every one of us on this call has imagined ourselves being at the top of the rung, uh, being Crown Royal. If you have it, then it's time to get there, okay? You got to imagine. But our first step in this is to become Ruby. And how do we become Ruby? Is we go out and we mingle with people and we work and we see how to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's back in the old days, it was knee to knee. Today it's on social media. We're not doing knee to knee. So there's a need for more of talking. There's a need for more of almost a rapport yeah. to get into that energy to pull that person through the computer now. <laughs> <laughs> pull them through the computer. That's a good phrase. I like that. Well, so, you got to pull the energy. It's about pulling that person into your conversation. Without that, you can't do that. And so you're asking questions about them. You're saying you have this understanding of pulling energy yeah. pulling them into the house as you, you gave the example of the expo you were in this past weekend through the computer yeah and you invite the person to invite them in it's about asking the questions it really is about inviting them and i yeah so it's from kind of an open heart in my opinion yeah is how I invite, yeah, yeah. And if it's not, if you're not inviting and you're not open and you've got problems and you got your shields up, everybody's gonna keep walking by. It's when you drop and you become vulnerable, you become the space that people feel safe to talk with you about their problems. So if that's, that's really, that's really the diamond you have to share, right? That. Yeah. It is this practice of already being the invitation, right? Energy, not keeping your own life dramas, whatever going on, but to be this open place, presence where the questions come from what you're noticing about that person, right? 100%. If you, it may be, how many times have, so, have you pulled someone into a conversation with, where'd you get that dress? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, you, it's about, where did you get it? It's about the invitation. It's about being. <laughs> See, this is what I love about you. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like, this is just <laughs> real. It's like, this is how it is, right? It's yeah. like. Just, it's be, simple. just be there it's and simple. do it and let it come be spontaneous and natural. Yeah. And right. if people can pick up on it when you're being fake. As long as you're being you. Yeah. And you're truly you and you're vulnerable in that moment, you can pull any you can pull those people to you. You can invite them into your world and they will become sometimes your best friend. The one that you least expect sometimes becomes that person that will work with you, that will take you to the top when you least expect it. Because they know 
that you're there to be there with them. You have to be real. If you're fake with a person, they're going to walk out the door every single time. Well, I really like that. And I, and I do want to, um, you know, move into our other speakers so that okay. there's also time at the end for people to ask questions of you, you know, so okay. that I'm not the only one asking these questions, but I, I really like that. What your, you know, your last point there of, um, be real and, um, be willing to be vulnerable. That's what I heard you say. Yes. And that, with this understanding that they might be the person that you do have this long standing friendship that starts to develop that is what helps you grow to your our triple crown diamond status. If they're not, there may be the person that will lead you to that person right. yes right so now you're it's that whole understanding that that costa also talks about this is what it's like this is how we do it right, right. we show up as ourselves and we're present with this are you going to be the one mm -hmm. yeah yeah and if you go with that intent with that energy or that intention of well this could be the one and if it's not, well, we'll sell them a bottle and go on down the road. <laughs> That's right. And you will. I know that. You <laughs> will sell them at least one bottle. Okay. That's beautiful. Thank you, Mary.